we have a 65 year old lady and she, she has come for follow up well few weeks ago she developed sudden onset of right sided numbness and on evaluation it was ischemic stroke well now the patient feels that her sensation is returning but she also experienced transient burning pain in the right upper and lower limbs that can be even induced by a light touch she is hypertensive and diabetes she smoked half a packet of cigarette for 30 years presently bp is high there is right hemi anesthesia at the moment also motor strength is normal and most likely diagnosis what we happened four week ago was well the answer to this question is thalamus well patient likely to have experienced lacunar stroke of the postolateral thalamus why is it so first of all we talk about like stroke even in the question it was written that it is on investigation the patient developed ischemic stroke that is understood now we say it is lacunar stroke because the only problem what the patient has is regarding sensory loss okay thalamus is a very fairly big structure but but the postolateral thalamus part is involved and it is this part which carries sensation from the spinal cord well this is spinal cord a very rough diagram this is the pain touch temperature they enter the cord they cross to other side and they come to thalamus thalamus and then we have position vibration sense they travel upward in posterior column this is posterior column they relay and second order neuron they come to thalamus this is the spinothalamic tract so ultimately pain touch temperature position vibration everything has come to thalamus thalamus is a relay station and from thalamus it goes to contralateral parietal lobe this is left side this is right side so every sensation has gone to contralateral parietal lobe that means that pathology occurs here every sensation will go okay and that is done by the ischemic stroke by the and of course the part where of thalamus i'm talking about is postolateral thalamus now isolated lacunar stroke in the postolateral aspect of the thalamus occur due to atro thrombotic occlusion of the small penetrating artery so called thalamogeniculate branches of the posterior cerebral artery well this patient has many feature which can induce atherosclerosis hypertension type 2 diabetes smoked half a packet of cigarette for 30 years so there are many predisposing factor for atherosclerosis and this is due to atro thrombotic occlusion of the small penetrating arteries now as i told you ventro postolateral and ventro postal medial nuclei of the thalamus transiently transmit sensation from the contralateral side of the body and face respectively well in our case there is a sudden onset of right sided uh, numbness is there okay consequent patient with thalamic stroke in this region often present with sudden onset of contralateral sensory loss involving on sensory modalities pure sensory because it has involved only those part of the thalamus which is carrying the sensation from the spinal cord to the contralateral parietal lobe now sometime thalamic bleeding occurs stroke ischemic stroke is localized but bleeding occurs then it can definitely this blood can spread to other part it can spread to it can spread to basal ganglia and corticospinal tract in the posterior limb of internal capsule so now when these are involved that can lead to hemiparesis because of what corticospinal tract acetosis why because of basal ganglia involvement so 
if the patient having thalamus involvement and now later on getting involvement of corticospinal tract, it is definitely a bleeding problem is there. Okay. But what is athetosis? I have a question for you. Write down the answer in your copy. Athetosis refers to slow involuntary and rhythmic movement of the limb, face, neck, tongue and other muscle. But classically we see in the hands, the finger are also affected with the few the flexing happening separately and irregularly. The hand move and toes, feet may also experience the effect. Look into this. Look into this. Okay. Look into this. Finger have different type of movement are there. This is flexing extension like this. This is typically athetosis. Now, thalamic patient has come. And as I mentioned in these, let's say this is thalamus. And ischemia has occurred. Now, in due course of time, thalamus functions start appearing again. After, okay, sensory deficit can improve after weeks to months. In our case also, patient had a problem a few weeks back and now she has come for follow-up. But patient may develop thalamic pain syndrome, dethrin Rousey syndrome. What is this? I'm going to discuss in the next slide. But before I proceed further, what is allodynia? Write down the answer. What is allodynia? Well, allodynia is a type of pain. People with allodynia can be extremely sensitive to touch. Activities that are, that are not usually painful like combing one's hair can cause severe pain. Like in our case also, patients say the slightest touch is causing severe pain to the patient. That is allodynia. Now what is so important about it? Because now what I told you in the patient in the recovery phase of thalamic lesion, they develop dethrin Rousey syndrome. This is characterized by severe paroxysmal of the pain over the affected area. Severe pain. Okay over the affected area. This classically ex exacerbated by slight touch and this is so-called allodynia. So now, so now imagine patient feel intense burning sensation, even slighter touch can cause pain. So we can classically say allodynia is occurs in thalamic pain syndrome, so-called dethrin Rousey syndrome. Now let's look into other option. Can it be internal capsule infarct? They have conolector pure motor or combined sensory motor. Why? Let's learn the anatomy. This is the posterior limb of the internal capsule. This is the anterior limb. Most simplest line diagram. This is the this carries motor fiber. This carries sensory fiber. Motor fiber are going down and sensory fiber are going up to the parietal lobe. These are supplied by deep penetrating artery. If this artery involved, so it will lead to motor problem. If this artery involved, it will lead to sensory problem. Both can also be involved and it will be motor and sensory. Okay. So, disruption of the corticospinal or somatosensory fiber in the posterior limb. But central post stroke pain is not a feature. The thalamic syndrome or dethrin Rousey syndrome, where the pain, burning sensation of pain appears after few weeks, is not a feature that we see in internal capsule lesion. Similarly, medulla, lateral medullary syndrome infection occurred due to posterior inferior cerebral artery, so called pica. And that's why this is also known as pica syndrome. Well, I have a question for you. Write down the answer in your copy. Pica is a branch of which artery? Write down the answer. Answer is vertebral artery. Well, now patient having this lesion, patient can develop lateral medullary syndrome, pica syndrome. Let me tell you what happened. This the anatomy of the medulla oblongata. This is inferior, 
inferior cerebellar peduncle okay this is the 10th nerve nucleus 8th nerve nucleus 5th nerve nucleus then this is the sympathetic chain sympathetic chain and here is the here is the spinal lemniscus this carries pain touch temperature from contralateral body pain touch temperature from contralateral body now this part of the brain is supplied by pica so if the pica is gone say this is on the right side this is left side so there will be right sided cerebellar feature right sided 10th nerve lesion but since and then eighth nerve lesion but uh, and fifth nerve lesion that will be ipsilateral uh, sensory loss on the sympathetic chain horner syndrome contralateral loss of pain touch and temperature so let us see so there is loss of pain touch temperature over the ipsilateral face and contralateral body due to spinal trigeminal area and spinothalamic tract lesion point to be noted face on one side and body of the other side sensory loss is there ipsilateral bulbar weakness nuclear ambiguous vertigo and nystagmus eighth nerve nucleus horner syndrome sympathetic fiber cerebellar features that i showed to you all are a part of lateral medullary syndrome and this is also known as wellenbach syndrome midbrain midbrain usually comes with ipsilateral third nerve palsy and contralateral hemiparesis well let me show you the diagram also these are the cortico spinal tract this is third nerve and this part of the brain is supplied by posterior cerebral artery so structure involved are this right side this left side third nerve and the cortico spinal tract there will be ipsilateral third nerve palsy contralateral hemiplegia this is uh, this is so called weber syndrome so this is what we get in midbrain lesion putamen putamen will lead to hypertensive putamen is the most common site of hypertensive bleed okay internal capsule lies adjacent to putamen is always involved uh, uh, is in uh, involved internal capsule is involved and as i mentioned in the previous uh, slides it lead to uh, hemiplegia because of involvement of cortico spinal tract contralateral sensory loss also and conjugate eye uh, eye pal gaze palsy that means eyes they see toward the lesion that is classically we see in putamen bleed okay but again reminding you putamen as such is not a cause of this problem putamen is a part of basal ganglia but it is all feature occur due to involvement of nearby internal capsule the golden line to remember lacuna stroke of posterolateral thalamus typically present with sudden onset of contralateral sensory loss involving all sensor pure sensory stroke months to a week to month later they can come with thalamic pain syndrome it is characterized by severe modality pain proximal burning pain over the affected area that is exacerbated by even light touch so called allodynia well i hope you like the session just to inform you we have following courses for you smart medicine 
there are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject, covering A to Z, including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than 1,000 questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB Medicine and Family Medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile ad as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much.